fuck's sake, it's upside down, upside down. Finish line, start line. Yeah. In Big River, plus 100. So this is a tiny one. We have to either win in 100 meters of it. <laughs> Going down. Yeah, it was a really slow motion drop. Now I'm up. Oh, my bike's not wanting to start back up because it went upside. Okay, off road mode. Well, okay, that way then, just let it go. So it's our left. Okay, what do we do? Um, how about we put it on its side and then drag it this way a bit? Okay. We'll then do one, one two, three. two, three. There we go, cool. So we do that, and now we lie it on its side and then pick it up again. Just trust me, lie it down. Okay, and back up. One, two, three. There you go, tie's out. Laying it down. I tried a different technique. Okay, I'm getting up. Keep me. No. One, two, three. Oh, man. Yeah! Well done. You scared his goats. It's hilarious. I saw your sand and then the goats just bossed bolted. You cannot touch your clutch I in the dunes. You've got to be in a high gear because you can't rev it to a high RPM. Like first gear doesn't exist. kilometers in of like 290. I've had four drops so far. Alid is currently somewhere just just there recovering from a, a drop and uh, this is really difficult riding. It would be very different on a small rally bike. I'm going to be honest this is a, a beast but I took on the challenge and I'm going to keep fighting on. We try and drag the front left. You don't think you can go around there, no? No, because I've got, well, if I've got to drag it a foot this way or three foot that way. So I'd say a foot this way is easier. Okay, one, two, three. <sighs> one more foot. One, two, three. <sighs>
fuck's sake, it's upside down, upside down. Vanessa! Sha! I'm really sorry, I need help. Yeah? After you help me. Okay. Um, or do we want to spin it and then lift? No, we can. We can do this. Okay. okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh. And again, okay, one, two, one, three. Two. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh. oh gosh. Okay, is that just overflow? We're not worried by because it's upside down. Yeah. Probably. Okay. I think we're going to need to go that way. Okay. I'm struggling a bit now. I uh, just can't get back into the river. I fall off. And then before I can get myself back and on and stable, I've fallen off again. I've just fallen off three times in. 100 meters, it's exhausting. Absolutely shattering. I realize it looks like absolute mayhem in these sand dunes. And when you're on a smaller enduro rally bike, your body weight can lean right back and de weight the front wheel. And you can kind of plow through the sand and steer with your body weight. But when you're on a bike that's four times your body weight and it's an adventure bike, which means the front end is heavy, pretty much just wants to duck and roll and cornering is incredibly difficult compared to normal so these dunes short snotty sandy absolutely brutal i'm gonna sit in the shade here we're currently taking five in the shade taking on some food and some fluid um i uh, just keep dropping it which isn't ideal well, we've got a lost guy coming back towards us we're in the middle of the dunes there we go that way he's been lost I'm having some really tricky navigation today. Right. I think we're having fun. Are we having fun? Yeah. Somewhere deep inside, we're having fun. Yeah. Hello. Hello. You all right? further than we were last time I talked to you. This is really hard. Harvard's stuck right now, but he said he's all right. So I'm just gonna give him a minute, and if not, I'll uh, walk back and help him. But we've just got to a bit of riverbed, so we've got 100 meter break, and then it's back into dirty dunes, because they're really small, full of rocks and, and grass, and there's no rhythm. It's just disgusting, this. Just really hard riding on a big bike. It's hard riding on a small bike. Sweaty mess. This is one of those rallies where it's different classes. You've got elite, pro, no, pro, elite, hard trail, and trail. And the top two categories are massively for uh, proper normal style, normal style rally bikes, 450s, etc. Um, Juan Pedro, who is on Harley Davidson Pan America, is gone full suicide mode and he's in the pro category on the Pan America. Um, he, he finished yesterday, but he said he had a really tough day. I cannot imagine how he's getting on today. So I'm in the hard trail category and that's what the organizers recommended for me. <sighs> thinking, thinking trail might be a better option for me and, uh, the size of this bike. Maybe he thought I was a better rider or this is tough. There are bikes behind us cause we've been passing a few people. So we're not at the back. But we are on the biggest, biggest bikes alongside um, Ivan, who is also in this category on the Pro Factory Tiger. And that's obviously bad boyed up, de-weighted, big suspension. It's rallied out mad time. We're, we're standard. Right, I'm going to take on some water and rest. Um, Alid's bike's got an issue. I think he's cooked it. Um, Riding in these conditions is a huge element of just trying to preserve the machine, but 
sometimes these conditions are just that insane, that intense. You can hear some other bikes spinning up in the sand. <laughs> um, hopefully his bike will cool down and all the power will come back. Stay tuned. This is my V right now. There's my tiger. And my feet. And my sweaty helmet. There is a lot of sweat in there. Tiger is down. Okay, walking this way. Brr, walking in sand. In knee frames and boots. Man, I don't remember my bike being so far away. I think we've had to accept that Alan's bike is down. It is not going to play ball. And now I've got a conundrum because one bike is down, which means one bike is still running. Which means technically, let's come back to the shade. Technically, I could carry on, but there's a reason why we're riding together in this. And that is because it's a really big bike. And I've had several drops today where I was not able to recover it on my own. And teamwork has got us through, but we're so close to the end of the dunes. And literally, I have, I'm completely on the fence. Although actually, I'm more on the fence of not going on my own because it sounds terrifying. But I just feel like I should fight. Okay, best case, I make it out of the dunes and I can keep going, I can get to a town, I can find signal, make it to a checkpoint or whatever, and make sure that they're coming to get you. Worst case, I make it 100 meters, 500 meters, one kilometer, and end up upside down in the dunes. Not able to recover. You don't want to be post in trouble there. You may as well help each other in you know, stuff. But there's no other teams in there. You can conquer a lot of stuff if you can't conquer them. Spoken to race control, we've put in the mechanical, they're gonna come and get Alad, they're gonna be about an hour, and they've kind of basically said to me that I need to carry on going and try and get back on the track. That's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm honestly I'm I'm scared. I've just gotta keep the bike upright. If I can keep the bike upright then I'll be fine. But if I drop it sideways, upside down on the dune, then I'll be getting rescued from another point somewhere just up ahead, but. You can do it. Well, the part you leave me in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Oh my God. You can do it. You can do it. I feel like I'd rather be the one being left in the desert. All you've got to do is sit here. I've got to try and quickly survive out there on my own. Are we agreeing I'm going to go that way? And then after that big one, I'm going to try and go left. It's relatively hard here. I can turn here and then go right. Oh, a track. Is that a track? I'm okay, but I'm on a flat bit, but I've stumped it. So I'm just trying to lift it, tip it. I can do this. Right, I've just got to tip you over. Let the sand go underneath. Kick the sand in. I'm going to cry the second I can't hear your voice. Thank <laughs> you. 
Looking for some plastic. There's plastic everywhere, but here. I've tried the glove. Yeah? It's coming? See, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, try and move it to here. Put your finger and then in. This this side must be higher. Stop it all. We've literally run out. We are we're here. 135. We've got fuel in 10k. <laughs> wow. Oh, thank you. This is good service. Do you have water? I've I'm out. No water left. Oh, I'm at the refueling. I have to say, leaving Alid was one of the toughest decisions I've made in like bike world because Leaving him in the desert is one thing. Obviously, I know he's safe. The organization's going to get him, but I'm still leaving him in the desert. But the biggest thing was that I was then disappearing off into the desert in June after June. I had another 12K, 10K of dunes on this beast. They are fast. I've just told them about the guy that's run out of fuel. I gave him a couple of liters, but I don't think it will get him here. They've gone off with fuel to get him. Do -do -do. Anyway. I know that this bike in those dunes, you know, I, you, I show you me picking up a bike all the time, but in the sand dunes in rally mode, when you picked it up 10 times, 15 times already, it's a really heavy bike. And so one of the reasons why I took on the mission of riding this ridiculously big bike in the rally was also because I was doing it with a friend and we were going to get each other over the finish line together. So leaving him and then going on in the dunes on my own, which is kind of what I got told to do by the organizers, was scary because I knew that one drop could be me then stuck, not being able to get it up, and then in a different place on my own in the desert. I actually kind of almost felt like I was gonna have a panic attack at one point, trying to keep it upright and go, but I got it out <laughs> and now I'm buzzing. I'm gonna get back on the steed, Tiger. Tiger and I are friends. My hair is not my friend right now because it's just in my face. So yeah, <laughs> that's the answer. Thank you. <laughs> At the food stop. They've got some great stuff. I'm not going to do the, the, the last part today. 234k in. And there's a little bit more of a leg now. But it is 420. And I've done really well to make it through those dunes. On that monster. Uh, obviously leaving Alid sadly. But I'm feeling really good. Going to take the rest of the day. Which isn't actually that long. Given it's 430. To try and recover. And be ready to get back out on the tiger tomorrow. <laughs> We've uh, just got, we've got another hour to go. From 1995. So that's your logo, La Fiesta? Yeah, that's my, my business. So, that's so cool. 1995. Yes, I, I, I... You're not old enough? No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ta-da! Really stupid.
stupid idea. Ah! Very good. You're very strong. Ah! <sighs> Tiring, exhausting, long. 520k. Okay, welcome to the tent for the night. I'm sharing with Justin over there. Alid is unfortunately still being rescued, so he's not back yet. But this place is pretty awesome. Check out the bathroom. Got a shower, a absolutely incredible marble sink and a toilet. Separated by a sheet, so um, obviously I do fairy dust and unicorn poofs, so it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go find my kit because it's quite late, it's half eight now and um, gotta rethaw myself, eat some food, shower, get to bed and then we're back out into the desert tomorrow. Like this is just ridiculous, why do we do this? 520 kilometers was my total today. Got nothing else, tired, admin. Just getting my, getting my food supplies out for the morning and what we've got to do is not tell Emma from Belize what's happened here. So that is pool scratchings that have exploded out in the tub. I think I'm gonna get a pork scratching reputation. <laughs> Ready. That is filthy, yeah. Oh! That was a good demonstration as to why you change the filters on the bikes when you're in jeans. Uh, so I'm going to my kit box to get a spare filter. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm doing all the, the bike servicing myself, but um, he, he really enjoys beating filters on the floor. <laughs> I'm not doing a very, very good job with the camera tonight, but I'm putting my fresh air filter in giving the bike a bit of a once over. Word on the street is that tomorrow is going to be a lot of dunes and with Alid's bike unknown at this point, he's not back yet. I'm not sure what to do because it is a very big bike for me to take into the dunes solo. But anyway, I don't need to make a decision now. But at some point in the next 12 hours, I will need to. Alright, get in there. Formal bolt. Slept super well. It's now time to see where we are because got here in the dark. Oh wow, we are in the dunes. There are even camels. Yeah, Mizuga dunes. And then if we go around the back here, we have the bivouac. They look better than I was expecting. Oh, they do. Hmm, smells really hot. We've got Alan's bike back, trying to started to work on it. It's looking hopeful that he just burnt the clutch out. We are gonna find out soon. Fingers crossed he will be going back into the desert and I won't be going back into the desert solo. It is looking promising for Alan's bike, but I need to start in the next hour and he's not gonna be ready, which means I've gotta make the decision to go into the desert on my own. So that's what I'm gonna do. Time to kit up morning briefing whilst doing the amends. Um, a few months today. It's looking like we might have Ahmed back, but we're gonna find out in a minute. Still playing the waiting game. We've got, I think about 250K today, and we have decided to do the tri trail class today because just how complicated those bikes are in the dunes, but also because it's nearly midday and we've not been released yet. Not many people are gonna be finishing today. So we thought we'd just play the, the, the stronger game or the sensible game, given the bikes were on and uh, try and make as much progress as possible. So I'm just walking back to the tent because uh, I need a pee. You didn't really need to show that, but that is what's happening. Oh, 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 it's hot in here now. Today's changed considerably. We're now doing not the original plan. We've all been briefed. We know what we're doing now. It's midday and we're setting off into the midday heat. It's gonna be a long afternoon and we'll just see how far we get. The idea of this event is that you never make the finish line anyway how far you can get so we'll see time to load up and get out there we go time to get back on the uh, tiger into the desert
my god, is that you? Did you hear one? But then you oh look, it's too flat. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah? the pylon so there's people over there let's just keep going then And then we follow the pylon, so I think we just ride that way, right? And then at 10.41 we hit a track. What's weird is there aren't many tracks under here. I can't see a thing, I'm just pushing because I'm getting absolutely filled in. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, don't stop, don't stop. Got to regroup. Fourteen, three, two. So we're going to be going down into a riverbed. Hey. Hey. Are you okay. I don't know why it makes me feel so safe when I see you. Okay, we've got to go up that step there, look. We're in a riverbed. 
it's very deep sand and we've got a bit of a cliff edge that we've got to ride up with a deep sand run up so I'm just doing the long game trying to ride tactfully like where Alid is you can kind of see it but it doesn't obviously look like much because this is a camera it's disgustingly deep sand there he is waving so can we come up to the right and round is the question there's, there's Sarah Dakar awesomeness there you go you can see that that was on a 450 we're on this way I reckon this is possible yeah this way round yeah Alan I'd say try and turn if you can I'll come help you but that way is possible you're gonna have to get so much speed to make it up that Nice. Well done. That was a beautiful turn. Oh yeah, I am. Come to the desert, they said. Come on a tiger, they said. It will be fun, they said. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is fun though. Thousand Juniors have a tagline of find your limits. They haven't found ours yet. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, we're good, we're good. One. Okay, pull it. No. Hey, thank you. We're gonna roll back. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Back on. How are you? Hey. Wow. This is hard. You're fucking incredible <laughs> with this bike. It's crazy doing this. It's crazy. Wow. This is insane. You're my hero. Uh, you're my hero. <laughs> wow. Ah. How are you doing? Fine. I'm relaxed because it's quite yeah. difficult. How's your Fun. knee feeling? Yay! Yeah, Amazing! Yeah. That's really good news. Enjoy it! <sighs> Let's go out. This yeah, we've got another K and a half in here. With. <laughs> I'm going to go up high. Yeah, you should think about where to put your wheels. <laughs> yeah. The problem is my bike has its own mind of where it wants yeah. its wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you should argue with her. With her. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, you uh -huh. too. I'll have an energy gel. Energy gel going in the mouth. I just have them in my pocket on my backpack. Nice. having a bite to eat and it's just it's so entertaining there's a guy coming back the other way down the track you'll see him here any second i'm not sure where he's going because it's definitely that way but i remember patsy quick telling me when i did my first rally in qatar she said every time you see another person just laugh to yourself and go another idiot lost in the desert and don't let whatever they're doing interrupt your navigation and where you're going <laughs> And the amount of times you see someone and you go, oh, is it, is it that way? And you start questioning yourself and I have to just remind myself, just another idiot lost in the desert. And that's not saying I'm not an idiot lost in the desert. I probably am too, but don't get swayed by someone else. Go with the gut is the lesson there. Yeah, definitely.
that riverbed was known. We've just done like four and a half K, I reckon, in deep sand riverbed where you are, your butt is as far back on the bike as you can possibly get. You're obviously on the on the balls of your feet on the pegs, obviously hands on the handlebar, but you're in like this origami position, trying to like, <laughs> so fatiguing. So we're refueling, we've got another K in there to go. We managed to get onto the, the edge of the river. Uh, we've got another K. We might we might try and divert down the edge, but it looks like it's heading into dunes. Oh, do you see the puff of sand come up there? Someone's stuck in the dunes. I love it. This is the this is the life. This is brutal. It's really hard, but you just never feel this alive doing anything else. And I'm really sorry, Alad. You potentially already caught the rally virus. The desert rally virus got the bug. <laughs> Go around it, look back. That one has got the wind edge facing us, which means it's a steep edge. It's not worth the risk. Sorry, sorry. Just a second, I just hurt, I think I've hurt my, hurt my back. Let's see the moment. That's the fastest off I've had. All of my offs so far have been like slow motion, slow mos, but that was, no, I've hurt, I've hurt my back. Can I have a hand up? Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. I think I've hurt my back. Can I have a pull up? Pull up, pull up, pull up. 